because this is an incredible moment. You've just fulfilled your destiny. If you can speak. Ah! 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 Well, as you can see there, it's Tuesday, um, July the 5th. Um, what was that? Uh, three days ago, I keep thinking it's Monday. Uh, Jai Opatai, the new IBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World, had his jaw broken in two places by former IBF champion Mirrors Breedis. The cards read uh, two judges, 116-112, and a third judge, 115-113. So, um... I pretty much we we pretty much went into detail after the fight about what happened with uh Opatai, and I'm not going to really beat um, the dead horse a little too much, but basically what I want to show you is he did have surgery after the fight. Um, here's a picture he posted on his social media. This was uh 12:55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 4th of July, um, here in the states. Um, let's see. I'm gonna pull up this picture here of his jaw where, as you can see, released by uh, main events, uh, Ben Damon, it was broken on two sides. So it looks like pretty much his jaw is hanging on, you know, by um, by his spine, like it's, 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 it's detached and it's crazy. Um, Big J, you've seen the image, right? What are your thoughts? Oh, yes, I saw the image. Uh, how you going, mate? Happy 4th of July, all that good stuff to you American brothers over there. Uh, brothers and sisters, mate, ooh, fuck, that looked bad. I mean, if Brutus was taking that fight lighthearted and did that, imagine what Brutus would have done if he was full on series. Would have fucking killed him. But yeah, um, yeah, that is going to be, I've heard reports that he's going to be having his jaw wired for 10 weeks and he's going to be sipping through a straw for 10 weeks. I mean, medically speaking, that's pretty much common knowledge anyway. You had two bad breaks like that, you're going to have your jaw wide for quite some time. Um, so he's got a long road, and we won't see him in the ring again until possibly, what, earliest May, uh, April next year? He's, so he's got a long, long recovery. But still, still one of the best victories in Australian boxing history. You can't doubt that. It was phenomenal. I don't know about, um, to me, I'm thinking maybe – you know, May or, you know, no later than this time next year is when he'll be able to fight because this is ugly. And remember what we uh, uh, talked about is um, first, he's got to heal up. Um, what did you hear about the details of that? You know, how long do you think it's going to take? Uh, oh, well, I, I've, I've heard um, 10 weeks is what jaw is going to be wide shut. And he's going to be drinking for a straw for 10 weeks. So... Mm -hmm. He's going to lose a lot of weight, a lot of fitness. He's not going to be able to do bugger all. He won't be able to train. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, so yeah, already you're, looking, we're you're right... looking at a good... Go ahead. Sorry? Already we're right there at pretty much October where he'll be able to, you know, um, start uh, training, you know, in any, you know, um, you know, in any type of capacity. But then there's also when will he be able to start taking contact in sparring, you know? Exactly. So exactly. right now, exactly. like it's so. looking like it's looking like a clear, you know, year layoff to me. And you know, uh, if you're his team, I don't think that you want to rush him back. No, it's not. It's an absolute shame that his momentum's never been high and it was killed in an instant, which is terrible. Yeah. You know, a year out of the ring, even at you know, in his prime at 27, that does do that does things to you. Yeah, you know, your timing's never the same. Yeah, you know, you're always a little bit slower. Your reaction's a little bit off. You might lose that touch of power. You know, all that sort of shit. So it's um yeah, he's gonna he's gonna have to go completely reinvent himself to uh you know um pick up where he left off. Mm -hmm. So well, as I said, go, go ahead. He's gonna have to do the Ali thing, where he's gonna have to become a more of a running kind of champion than a battling kind of champion. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, you know, instead of taking the big shots, he's got to work on his defense. Yeah, because the uh, question I, is now, um, psychologically, how is he going to be um, going in there and not wanting to get hit in that jaw again? Now, the good thing about him is he is a fighter, even though he did slow down later on in the fight, he is a fighter that uses a lot of movement. And now, going forward, I'm wondering if this is going to make him, um, or it should, I'm going to say it should make him a better defensive fighter. You know, especially going in there against now, he's at world top 
level competition. Maybe he was able to get away with this stuff, you know, with the lower level competition of guys that he was fighting. For example, guys like his last fight, a seven, two and two, you know, you know, he could get away with yeah, that type of stuff. But going in against, you know, one of the pound for pound top 15 um, champions in the world and Miris Breedis, um, who's also competed at heavyweight and has the best resume overall right now between um i can say light heavyweight and cruiserweight you know he has you know phenomenal resume win or loss only lost to Usyk before coming into the ring i'm thinking that um that's where the inexperience came in and that um going forward in the future Opatai is definitely going to be a more tighter defensive fighter because he's not going to want to get hit in that jaw anymore it was broken on both sides i can't i can only imagine um, the pain that probably hit him and maybe um, the psychological issues that he may have. I'm not talking about, you know, being depressed, but like, damn, you know, I got this big time fight. You know, I won, you know, I was trending in the world and then I broke my jaw. Can't even talk about it. You know, now I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm pretty much in the house. I can't do any media obligations. Nah, he'll be right. I'll sort it out. Sorry. Yeah, but, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about that because that that may, you know he hasn't he hasn't got to make all those commitments. He can just focus on his recovery. So it's probably a positive thing. He hasn't got people bugging him for interviews because he can't talk. So I mean, well, I mean that's true. But um, at the end of the day, these fighters want to make money and they want to go on to be you know um, on the world stage. And he's already got ten weeks taken away where he can't like media obligations and you know entertainment. That's you know a, a, definitely a part of boxing. You know, don't get me wrong. I want him to take as much time as he needs to heal up because once he comes back, I guess we can go on to the next um, uh, topic is he's going to be likely thrown in the deep end. The IBF will likely allow him one voluntary defense and then they'll set a time like, all right, listen, by let's say if he's out for a year, let's just say hypothetically he's out until next June. They'll say, all right, you know, you have to have a fight scheduled between June and July and then by you know, the end of 20, um, uh, 2023, you know, you're going to have to defend your title. Yeah, I guess you know, And in the meantime, um, go ahead. Now, what are the rankings looking like? Who's in the top 15? Right now, um, um, right now, Richard Reactor and Chris Billum Smith. Chris Billum Smith is number three by the IBF, and he's going to be fighting um, Isaac Chamberlain. I forgot exactly when that fight is, but I did update the boxing schedule this weekend and it's down below in the description box by network so every video you'll see that i if, if you haven't been paying attention i update the boxing schedule down below in the description box it's fully up to date but chris billum smith and isaac chamberlain are fighting i forgot the exact date but it's down below um rich react porges won recently and we'll likely see um react um richard react versus chris billum smith likely in an eliminator, that's that's probably going to be the next champion or the interim champion, one of those two guys. And Richard Riakpour would be I, the favorite. Are any of these blocks a real threat to Jock? Richard Riakpour. Yeah, Richard Riakpour. He fights okay. on uh, Sky Sports um, under um, the promotional company Boxer. Okay. Is he a British black, is he? British guy, yeah. Um, right, right. And, and, and when he does come back, they can say, okay, well, if you don't, fight uh your mandatory then you know are you going to try to unify the division and there you have lawrence okali a younger macabu don king fighter lawrence okali wbo champion he's um on the record on the boxing voice recently talking about some issues that he's having with his promotional company and the rumors are it's because they couldn't secure the mirrors breeders fight now our theory or at least my theory we talked about before opataya versus breeders was that um, the Britis underestimate, underestimated Opataya and he was looking for an easier shot that didn't turn out to be easy. So he probably thought, all right, let me take this. Let me get my mandatory out of the way, go over to his country, beat him. This was in a perfect world for Britis, beat him and then try to whore myself off of Jake Paul again. Then if I can't get him, then double back around for a unification against Makabu um Gail Golomarian or Okali but me personally if you want my personal opinion I really don't think that Miris Breedis wants to fight Okali and I don't think he did before and I think that is something that he just doesn't like in his style to where the other two paths for him Makabu and um Golomarian would have been easier paydays you see what I'm saying but that's all up in smoke now
That just was my theory. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you know, um, because you know, he could have fought Kali. He could have fought him. You saw that they had, like, you know, the zone was building them the fight. They had him face off, and this motherfucker showing up just like Super Mario. Oh, yeah, what a fucking dumb shit act that was. And then he <laughs> used their event. Thing. He used their event to not talk about Okali, but to try to talk about Jake Paul. That was a smack in the face to the zone in the match room. And Okali. Yeah, it would have been... It would have been it would have been better if he rocked up like a crop Dundee. It would have made more sense. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, but bloody uh, yeah. The less said about that Mario stint. Yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, but um, I was I was basically I was saying that um, if it isn't um, an IBF mandatory when he comes back, see, it's all depending on what the IBF is going to do. You know, because regardless, they still have they can't say, OK, you've been injured. Fuck that. You know, you got to come back and fight your mandatory, you know, so they're going to at least give him a voluntary. So what does he do? You know, fight someone in the top 15, not, you know, his mandatory yet or try to go for a unification. First, when he gets back. You know, like th th there's options for him. What are your thoughts? What do you think he should do when he come back? Well, well, if I was advising him, I'd be like, go after old mate at WBC because okay. he's easy pickings. I mean, he's not even a cruiserweight. What is he weighing about one ninety or some bloody thing? Macabre. He's a blown up light heavyweight. Yeah, yeah Macabre. Yeah, he's not even a cruiserweight. He's a bloody blown up light heavyweight. So go after him. That would be or um, wait to see what Gumilian's doing because he hasn't fought in, what three years. When last time yeah, he's he ain't fighting in a while. He hasn't fought in a while, so he's been inactive for a long time. But then again, the WBA is making all their champs unify and all, get rid of all their uh, weaker belts mm -hmm. like they should have done three years ago. Goulamarian um, hasn't fought since um, December of 2019, the 28th, the end of the year, pretty much. How was that fought? Um, hold on, I just took his resume down. I'm looking um, to see if he had any type of news or any links to fight. A Constantin, a Constantin, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, uh, it wasn't Kate so, Watts. It must be in the fight for Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, no. Nah, um, yeah, uh, I, I think I think um, um, the, the WBC champion is probably the way to go, but whether Don King would... Uh, you know, allow that to happen. Who knows? Because it's Don King's you know, final last champion, by the way. This is last yeah, exactly. Champion. He wants to protect him. But then again, I mean, Dean Longan would put up the cash to get him into Australia. And that's sure, what I mean, Don, Don King, King is going to follow. No, he's going to follow where the money's at. Don Don King has no pulling power anymore. Like, nah, this is not the nineties anymore. So, yeah, the Don King now is not the Don King thirty years ago. He's got no sway. So. Um, yeah, I, I think that would probably be the best way to go because it would be a, a easy, a good you know, comeback fight. It'd be easy pickings, and he'd pick up another title, and that's three. Mm -hmm. So, pretty much after that, I mean, after that, he'd have a lot of people coming after him. Um, but that would be the way I'd be. I'd be going um, advising him, or just fight. Who's number fifteen in IBF? Someone we've probably never heard of. Yep. And that's the that's the whole. Um, uh... Top, lower, top, bottom, bottom 15. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would be saying if you can secure um, the WBC champ, go after that bloke. If not, just fight the lowest level well, you can to, lay your Well, listen on. to this. Listen to this. Uh, a David Light is rated number 11. He's from uh, New Zealand. 18 and Isn't he 11. a light heavyweight? 18. Well, he's at cruiserweight now. I uh, know about that guy. He's um he's fought in Australia a couple of times. Who did he beat? I think he uh, did. He fight Bam Bam Flanagan or Cam. He, he, he knocked out uh, Trent Broadhurst, and he's been he's been that's a cruiserweight it. his whole career. Yeah, that's right. He knocked out Trent Broadhurst. So yeah, there I knew you he go. knocked out someone from Australia. So if I yeah, if I'm the yeah. promoter, that would be me putting on my promoter hat and say, "All right, we're going to bring you back and get the top 15 guy. Let's call you know." And then we also want to test test out you know your chin. Now David Light is undefeated. Um, and he does have 11 KOs, but for a top 15, a guy right there in that oceanic area, if I'm the promoter, I will put that on and then go after a unification, you know, and then mm -hmm. double back down to the man, to the mandatory. 
That's what I would do. Try yeah. to go after uh, Makabu. You know, um, basically, I would make that his next two fights. You know, David Light. You know, I watch some tape on him first. You know, to see like, all right, let, let's see what kind of punches he got, and if we can stay away from him. Um, you know, go after him, and then try to go after Makabu, and then fight the mandatory, and then if Okali's still around, Angula Marion. You know, focus on them. You know, whichever one's politically easier to try to unify the division. So he's got a path. That's right. And it's all depending on oh, where got- Maris Breedis is going to, what he's going to do. But as you already talked, I'm gonna let you give your thoughts on what you think. You know, Breedis is likely going to do. Well, I mean, he's 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 not going to fight in the rematch straight away because he's going to wait too long. And at his age, he can't afford to have a year off. Yeah. So he needs to have another. He he needs to have another fight himself. Um, I very seriously doubt that he'll get um, a car blue. Uh, that won't happen because um, he would smack the shit out of that guy. Mm. Um, he won't get good Miller in. Uh, the Akali fight, what's the point now? Because he doesn't have a belt, so that's not going to happen. Yeah, so the Akali probably will play hardball now. and like, look, you ain't giving me a shot, so you know you got to come up with some extra money or something. <laughs> Well, he doesn't have any. He doesn't have any pulling power. He hasn't got a belt. Yeah. He hasn't got any belts now. So he, he's not. He's uh, same story as um, Jai. He's good, probably going to fight a low, low tier guy to yeah, get his um, get a W back up in his corner, and then do the same thing. Jai's going to probably do try to fight another champion or get his rematch with Jai. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard anything about a rematch clause. I don't believe there was one. Um, I don't think there was one, what was it? I don't believe I don't, I don't think anyone ever mentioned it. No, I never there mentioned it. There actually was one. Yeah, well, there you go. There probably wasn't. We did um, say we did hear Breedis during the um um he visited uh Opataya in his dressing room and he did say he wanted the rematch. Yeah, well they all say that. Yeah. I mean until you actually see him in the room. Yeah, you know, they all say that after the bloody you know. They all say that, but yeah. You know, well I'll believe what I said. Yeah. Um yeah, but you know, Brutus, Brutus has got on the same path as Jai. He'll probably fight a you know a lower ranked guy, you know, belt them around the park, and you know go back after another title. So, mm-hmm. but he could be doing the same thing. He he might go after um he might try to get Makabu first because that would be easy picking for Brutus just as much as it would be for Jai. Yeah. But Brutus is you know Brutus is not gonna a broken nose doesn't take as long as a broken jaw to recover. So he's gonna be out for at least three months, mm-hmm. probably four. So, you know, Makabu would be easy pickings for Breedis, but whether or not Don King wants it to happen is another story. So, basically, they're, they're pretty much in the same boat. Yeah. So, low-level competition and then go after another title. Simple as that. All right. Um, well, that's pretty much it. Um, on my end, I'm going to say that um, as soon as we get some news on Opatai, we're going to um, be covered, and, and it's safe to say, obviously, um, we are going to be covering the entire uh, Cruiserweight division. Um, as soon as I hear of Gulamarian fighting anyone, trust me, I'm going to be covering it. The same thing with Makabu and um, what's going on with Lawrence O'Kali. Uh Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. Um, finally, I have a boxing show that's going to be on two. Well, let me explain it this way. Normally, it's going to be on Tuesdays from 6 p.m. to about 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. That's the way I'll be able to... Um, on Tuesdays, go over fights of the week, uh, past fight uh, weekend events. Uh, Thursdays, you know, normally when press conferences are, I'll be able to recap the press conferences, talk about the news, you know, from the week on. Friday, recap the week, um, recap the uh, weigh-ins. And then on Saturdays, we'll be streaming during main events of major fights. And if there's no scheduling of, basically, if there's no scheduling of conflicts, you know, if there's two cards going on at the same time, you know, of significance, sometimes that we get more, you know, a little bit too much, in my opinion, but there's going to be streams. Um, down below in the description box, links to the WBC uh, app, Powered by the Vive, work, ha- Vive Network. Haven't been really pushing him a lot lately because I've been doing a whole lot of things in the background, organizing, getting ready for finally his consistent schedule that I've been searching for on YouTube for years now, and people have been asking me to do. So, um, as soon as we hear um, an update on um, Opatai or anything that's going on with that, of course, and all, and basically now all of your Australian boxing, thanks to my colleague Big J, we're going to be covering everything, especially if it's um, uh, uh, worth the time and all Australian boxing champions. Um, closing thoughts? Uh, I wanted to ask you the question. Based on your knowledge of Australian boxing, this is your opinion here, how would you rate Opatai's win 
overall everything that you know that you've done in, over the last in, in Australian boxing. Yeah, in Australian boxing, how right you now he beat Mirrors Breedis. Um, I'm going to rate that a bigger win than Cambosos over Tiafimo. Mm-hmm. You know, but not that, bigger than Jeff over Pacquiao. No, I, no I well, it depends that. on how you look at it. Well, yes, it's bigger than Jeff Horn. No, wait a minute. Let me think. I about don't rate that. it bigger than, than Jeff. That was fucking Pacquiao. You can't top that. That's true. But I'm looking at. See, here's the thing. I'm looking at all as aspects. You know, promotionally. Mm-hmm. Um, like what it meant, you know, if it was a prime Pacquiao, all of that. But obviously it is, you know, looking at all the factors, it is Jeff Horn over Manny Pacquiao. No one ever thought that was going to happen, you know, and it was trending globally. Everyone was like, oh, shit, Jeff Horn, no matter who you think won. I, looking back every now and then, I change up. But I do feel that Jeff Horn uh, did enough to beat Pacquiao, but... He didn't take him seriously. He didn't take him seriously. I'm looking. I I got a chance to watch the fight over and over again. And Manny Pacquiao allowed him to outwork him. That's pretty much what he did. You know, outwork him. He did. He did. But I remember your initial reaction. You were pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But now... what are your times? But I, I would I would definitely think that, um, um, or I would say that Opataya right now is number two. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Because he absolutely. was just dominating the first half of the fight. He was. He was. You know. He was. So, all right. Um, um go ahead. Uh, as as we said with George and Lopez, by the time that fight rocked up, it was about fifty five forty five. It was a pretty, you know. George wasn't a complete outsider. Mm. Where Jai was, no one was giving him a chance. Yeah. I think there was maybe one guy on YouTube said, oh, yeah, he'll win by UD. And I went, fucking what? Yeah. Okay. But most people were giving him, oh, yeah, he'll make a good account for himself and then Breeders will play over him for a bit and then knock him out, which that didn't happen. So, yeah. But, you know, I mean, yeah, I think it's one of the, you know, greatest victories of Australian boxing history of all time. Simple as well that. So. All right. Many um, people are saying that. So. All right. Take your time out. Uh, like the video and subscribe. Uh, next time some um, Australian boxing news pops up, we will be here. Wait, who's supposed to be coming back next? What's the next Australian fight? Significant one. Uh, oh, shit. Um, nothing really. Are you talking it's, significance? I mean, it's not until uh, uh, September, talking... right? Paro, uh, Brock Jarvis? No, nah, before that. Um... Nikita Zoo's taking on Ben Horn. The brothers are battling. That's okay. July 20. Um, uh, Susie Ramadan's supposed to be coming back sometime next month. It's yet to be confirmed, but she does have an opponent. Mm-hmm. That, that, that I really look forward to. Uh, bar that, that's that's really about it until Paro um, v. Um, Jarvis. And then, of course, we're all waiting for Tim Zoo to get his shot against Charlo. But um, by then... Um, Haney Cambosis too will be happening. Yeah, we're going to be before... talking about that mm. uh, next. And then, I mean, well, next. you know, Australian boxing has been pretty busy over there, you know, so guys kind of need a break. Like, it's been it's been crazy schedule over there the last several months. That's been fucking great. It's been good. Yeah. Uh, I will. Uh, Ebony's, we're waiting for Ebony to have her next fight. Uh, mm. Ebony Bridges. Um, Shanika Johnson needs another total defense. Mick. Zarafa's fight's possibly going to happen. It's it's all happening here at the MCG, as they'd say. So it's bloody busy. But this is, as I said, this is one of the best, if not the most significant uh, years in Australian boxing history. I mean, look what's happened. Yeah. You know? And undisputed twice. One of the biggest upsets you know, of all time. Uh, ladies winning championships. What more could you fucking want? Yeah. So, all right. Um... We've already uh, went well over our um, time, but, you know, no worries. The more, the better. Um, once again, thanks for watching. Take a time out. Drop a like. It really helps us get up in the uh, YouTube algorithm. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.